I'm Mark Matsumoto, and today I'm going to show you how to make a traditional Japanese treat called ohagi, which is also sometimes known as botamochi, so stick around! Beans and rice may not be everyone's idea of a sweet treat, but here in Japan, they form the basis for most traditional sweets. Although there are many variations, I'm going to show you how to make a basic ohagi made by wrapping a small ball of mochi rice in anko, or sweet red bean paste. It's a celebratory food that's usually associated with Ohigan, which is a Buddhist holiday that coincides with the spring and autumn equinox. Using my method makes this easy enough to prepare that it's a treat you can enjoy any time of the year. Sound good? Let's take a look at our ingredients. To wrap the ohagi, I've got one cup of warm water, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and 450 grams of anko, and I've got an easy recipe to make it from scratch, so check the link in the description. For the filling, I'm using 160 grams, or about 3 quarters of a cup of mochi rice, 1 cup of water, and 1 tablespoon of sugar. The stickiness of rice is determined by the ratio of starches in the rice. Long grain rice contains more amylose, which makes it fluffy, while short grain rice contains more amylopectin, which is why it's stickier. Mochi rice is a special cultivar of short grain rice, and its starch content is almost 100% amylopectin, which is how it gets its soft, chewy texture. The first thing we want to do is wash our rice. This isn't because the rice is dirty, but because we want to get rid of the excess starch on the outside of the rice, which can make it not cook properly. Now I'm going to add this to a pot, along with the water and sugar. Let's cover this up with a lid, and you want to let the rice soak for at least 30 minutes, or preferably one hour. Once the rice is done soaking, turn the stove on to high heat and you want to bring the water up to a boil as quickly as possible. By the way, don't open the lid at any point until the rice is done steaming, otherwise you're not going to have enough water in the pot to cook the rice properly. That's why I recommend using a glass lid so you can see what's going on in the pot. Once the water is boiling, turn down the heat all the way and set a timer for 10 minutes. When the timer goes off, turn off the heat and then set another timer for 10 minutes to let the rice finish steaming. While we wait for that, let's add the salt to our bowl of warm water and stir that together to dissolve the salt. We're going to use this to keep the ohagi from sticking to our hands and it's going to impart just a hint of salt to contrast the sweetness of the anko. Okay, the timer's up, so let's get the rice into a bowl. Then we're going to use a spatula to mash the rice up. This is normally a big no-no when you cook rice, but for ohagi, we want to partially smash the grains of rice so the mixture comes together into a sticky mass. Okay, this is looking good, so let's get this over to our work area with the salt water, anko, and a sheet of parchment paper. Before we shape our ohagi, I want to take a moment to thank everyone for supporting my work here. Whether you're a patron with access to my secret stash of recipes, or you're just taking the time to watch my videos to the end, these are just a few of the many ways that you can support my work, so thank you. If you've learned something new from this video and you want to help, hit the link in the description down below to see what you can do. To shape the ohagi, I'm going to put on a pair of gloves, and then I'm going to dip my hands in the salt water to wet them so the rice doesn't stick. Then I'm going to grab the rice and pinch off a ball that's about the size of a ping pong ball. Roll the rice between your hands to press out any air and shape it into a smooth ball. Now I'm going to repeat the process with the rest of the rice. This should be enough rice to make 8 medium sized ohagi or 10 small ones. Now it's time to wrap our ohagi. I'm going to wet my hands again and use a spoon to scoop about 50 grams of anko into my hand. This is a little less than a quarter cup. Now I'm going to use my thumbs to press the anko out into a round disc. Grab a ball of mochi rice and place it in the center. Then I'm going to press gently on the rice with one hand while I turn the anko in my other. 
Then you should be able to fold the flaps of Anko you've created over the rice to seal it in like this. Okay, let's do another one. I'm gonna scoop the Anko into my hand and press it out. Then I'm gonna get a ball of rice in the center and press it in with one hand while I toss and rotate the Ohagi in my other. This evenly spreads the Anko up the sides of the rice. Shaping Ohagi kinda reminds me of playing with mud as a kid. And maybe I'm a little crazy, but it's super satisfying. I'll admit, they're not the prettiest things in the world, but if you like mochi, you'll love these. To plate these up, I'm gonna lay down a bamboo leaf for a splash of color, and then I'm gonna place the ohagi on top. You can use this as a chance to fix any imperfections in their shape as you transfer them. Alright, let's pair this with a bowl of matcha, and we're ready to eat. Mmm, this ohagi looks so good. Let's try it out. Itadakimasu! Alright, let's see. I'm gonna go in for a corner here. Mmm! The mochi rice in the center is tender and sticky, and that sweet nutty anko on the outside envelops each bite of rice. And because I made my own anko from scratch, it's not cloyingly sweet. So check out the recipe at the link in the description down below. All right, I'm gonna have this with a little bit of tea. Mmm. It's calming and relaxing, and that slight bitterness cuts through the sweetness of the hagi. It's so good, and it's so easy to make, so I hope you'll give it a try. Well, I think I'm gonna go work out so I can have a few more of these, but check out this playlist for more mouth-watering sweet treats, and I'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>